I am just giving people a few minutes to realize that we are on live. <laughs> and yes, you are good enough, Scotty. It's just <clears throat> trying to give people a little chance to find out that we're live. Because I don't want to really get into the meat of what I'm going to talk about until people are here. It's Mini Cow. He's an old cow cat. It's the old cow cat. There he is. Whoa. Uh, let me get over there. There he is, Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Important. Posing for his adoring fans. He's going to have his own OnlyFans page, I think. He's taking a break from the World's News uh, Champion training to make this special appearance. Tonight. Whoa! Woohoo! Woohoo! Looking at my skirt, ain't ya? Y'all trying to look at my skirt! Well, that was some excitement. You know, that was Scotty he was wishing. Saying, I wonder what's a Mama D skirt. Okay. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> yeah. That's Scotty boy. Um. <laughs> okay, that was uh, that was exciting. That's right. It was you. I knew it. <laughs> he was willing it. He opened for an upskirt shot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So we have a lot of fun here on Deep Blue. I don't know how many people are going to actually get... It was so hard to put out the announcement today. I had to redo it and redo it and reach. I had to keep redoing that announcement. And then I come back in and it's gone. So I had to set it later. And um, it was going to be at 8.30, but now it's at 9.30. So. I don't know. He needed a couch shot. <laughs> and there's Elderberry. Hey, we're getting some people now. Project Skyfalls. How you doing? Yeah. Letting people get a chance to know that we're in. Because <clears throat> what I'm talking about is so bizarre. Um. I had a heck of a time. I had to reword. Finally, I reworded everything in the announcement. And then finally, it went out. And I had to put different hashtags on. I think I might have triggered some. Kind of algorithm, algorithm, algorithm. Who could ask for anything more? Yeah. I think it tr triggered some kind of algorithm. Um, yeah. And Project Sky Falls, well, it's going to be interesting because, um, hi, I'm Ocean of the Ocean's Deep Woo, and here we do the deepest of woo, for anybody who's new, new, and it's, it's not new woo, I mean, if it's new to you, it may be new woo, but 
to us, it's it's woo. It's just woo. So that's what we do. So if that sounds a bit like Dr. Zeus, and you like Dr. Zeus, that's great. Okay, I try to present things with a little bit of humor. Okay, uh, sometimes a lot of humor. We we have a good time around here, but um, I'm just reminding you that you need to be nice to your fellow chatters and me, and then you're okay. But we have a lot of, <laughs> this is practically a support group for magical people and the star seeds and shamans and whatever. Uh, experiencers, people who have experienced weird things. So be nice to each other, okay? And yeah, where's Mark Arkspark? Mark Arkspark. And where's Mary? I haven't seen Mary in ages. And where's Mishi? And Witchy? Hey, you guys. Come on in. It's time. So, um, as you might know, if you have been following the show, I had a recent experience where I saw one of my future lives, what apparently is a future life, from our viewpoint, is a future life. Anyway, I asked about that. Where we already have the AI all over the place taking care of things. And... Um, and also where I was the light being. And these are two fractals of myself. That is lives. <laughs> um, I finally figured out. So, um, it's getting real interesting being me. When you're a player in the name. Into Matrix. That's one thing, but when you're designing the Matrix, that's another. Well, then I guess I gotta. Oh, well, then I guess you go where you go. If they're over uh, there, then that's where they want to be. Hopefully, they will see that I'm on because I put out. I put out. Uh, and you know, it's like, what do you want to hear? What are you interested in? I can't tell them what to be interested in, but kind of miss them when they're not around. It's kind of important tonight because it turns out that this all has bearing on that life with the AI. And I told you that one of that what was there greeting me like a pet that was missing me was my friendly little AI called Sparkle, shaped like an octopus. That was pretty much running things while it was gone. And it greeted me pretty much like a pet that had been missing me and said I had been gone a long time. <sighs> then I come to find out that sparkles are very common in that place and time that those AI run all kinds of things. And I think also the matrix. That is what a big one is running the matrix. And then 
probably hooked all the other little ones. Well, we gave the Matrix a reset and an upgrade, and, you know, we've been doing that stuff. Those of us who do that kind of thing, and that's part of what's going on now, is we're working all that out. Mm -hmm. Pets also wait for us on the other side. Yeah, they do. Yep, sometimes they come back and sometimes they come back and visit too. Mine do. So, um, well, natural. See, that's just it. They are coming. We're not going to stop that. However, as I said, if we teach them love, it's going to be okay. Natural? Yeah. I'd agree. But I don't think we're going to stop AI from happening. Um. Oh yeah, Matt, your your pets our pets are coming with us when we move on too. They're not gonna be left in the old matrix. They're gonna be with us. And sometimes they'll be back. I've had pets come back as another little cat or dog. Yeah, they are a project. Might also come back and see me from time to time. Well, anyway, as I said in the former show that I was going to be talking about today, what I was going to be talking about today, um, Yolana found something after I told her about that experience. She got a, took a notion to look into octopuses. Now, I'm preluding all this from, I'm going to be a little careful what I say, because I guess I, in my other announcements, maybe I was triggering algorithms. So, um, rather than a lot of speculation, I'm going to let you figure some of this out. So, uh, but I think you're bright enough to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, So anyway, she found these facts about the octopus. And as the title suggests, the last ones may surprise you a bit. Or actually, any of these may surprise you. Okay. Starting with the first one. Octa means eight. And we all know that. And um, by the way, this article that I was handed is 50 Interesting Facts About Octopuses by Editorial Staff, which last updated on May 30th, 2023. So it says, um, the wonderfully weird octopus may be as close to alien life as we could get today. Human lineage diverged from it about half a billion years ago. Billion with a B, that is. And our evolution took radically divergent paths. Octopuses develop unique survival mechanisms, including a highly adapted body and surprising behaviors. They also have a level of intelligence that rivals the brightest mammals. Studying them helps us see the world from a different perspective. The lessons could potentially lead to industrial and medical breakthroughs. Read on to learn 50 interesting facts about octopuses. Okay. 
James Ortiz, how you doing? Okay, James is in, that's good. So, octopus means eight feet in Greek. The radial limbs attach directly to a large head called a mantle, a characteristic of cephalopods, including the squid and the cuttlefish. These appendages help them to move, hunt, and hide. And I would add, though, remember, it can look like only seven if one's hiding behind the body. So, there are over 300 species of octopus. They roam every ocean on Earth. Some are under an inch. Others grow up to 30 feet. The largest adult weighs less than a gram. The largest recorded specimen is roughly 600 pounds. So, here's a riddle. Where does a 600-pound octopus sit? Anywhere it wants to. Okay. Okay. And here is your octopus. There you go. There's your picture. Okay. It, they evolved from mollusks. Ancient cephalopods had protective shells. However, the load slowed them down. So creatures who ditched these got faster, enabling them to catch prey and evade predators. The modern octopus evolved from mobile mollusks. Now there is a good name for a company, Mobile Mollusk. What kind of seafood are you ordering? <laughs> Somebody starting a, a fast seafood company. Yeah, that would that would be kind of cool. Mobile Mollusk. Okay. Um <laughs> Okay. Uh, they didn't always have eight arms, it turns out. <laughs> what? Oh, never mind. Um, they didn't always have eight arms. In 2022, researchers published a study. You're going to love this one. Published a study on a vampiropod fossil with 10 functional limbs. I don't like that name. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? A vampiropod fossil. It is the oldest known octopus ancestor. And this goes back to what I was telling you. It looks like as we evolve, we lose things. We lose limbs. Okay, a lot of times. You know, we're, we get more streamlined. We lose things, features, and develop. Different, you know. Anyway, so um, it's the oldest known octopus ancestor at 328 million years old. Its scientific name is Silipsimapodi by Denny after President Biden. And the friend who gave this to me said, who is also millions of years old. But I don't think probably that's true, at least not in this form. Anyway, that's just her sense of humor. Okay. Squids versus octopuses. There is a difference. Don't confuse squid with octopus. Squids have ten appendages and a more triangular head. They also swim near the surface. Octopuses often roam in the deep. Who said Santa Claus was real? Oh, dear. Scotty, that sounds really gross, but hey, each to their own. I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that, and I don't think I'm going to repeat it. 
six, Houdini Who, the octopus is arguably, arguably a better escape artist. These soft invertebrates can squeeze into holes just bigger than their beak and eyeballs. It lets them hide from predators and escape aquariums when boredom strikes. Now, here's something rather interesting in light of what we were talking about. Hmm. Wow. Okay, Scotty. Um, wow. Hmm. They're talking about how to kill an octopus. Scotty's telling us how to kill an octopus. Anyway, um, here's an interesting fact I didn't realize. Octopus blood is blue. Now, where have we heard the term blue bloods? Blue, blue bloods. Yeah, blue bloods, blue bloods. Mm, interesting. Octopus blood is blue. Interesting. Isn't it also interesting how Kali, Hindu goddess with a whole bunch of arms, those guys, a lot of those guys were blue bloods, you know, they were blue. They were blue skin. I believe she had dark skin, though, but I don't remember. I think that she's usually shown with black skin. But, um, interesting. Blue bloods. So really, octopus blood is blue. It can transport oxygen more efficiently in cold environments with low oxygen levels. The color comes from high amounts of a copper-based pigment called hemocyanin. Three hearts pump this blue blood. Two for the gills and one for the rest of the body. Wow. So they have three hearts. And hemocyanin instead of hemoglobin. And this is interesting to me. I'm going to leave you to speculate why. Hmm. Octopus arms are super sensors. They can detect chemicals, essentially tasting and smelling whatever they touch. They can also think independently with severed arms reacting to stimuli for up to an hour. Lost limbs can regrow, but it takes several months. So there they already have a big advantage. They can regrow lost limbs like a lot of sea life. There are other sea life. I believe starfish can do the same. <sighs> Interesting. Gills and skin. The octopus extracts oxygen from the water through its gills. It can also breathe through its skin, which absorbs 41% of its oxygen requirements while resting and 33% while swimming. Which means it absorbs almost but not quite as much oxygen through its skin as it does through its gills. Propulsion for speeding through the water. When it's not in a hurry, it crawls to conserve energy, but it can go faster by swimming with its tentacles. But for maximum speed, it expels a jet of water out of siphon, propelling it in the opposite direction in a movement known as backward swimming. And we've seen examples of this if we've done much uh, looking into it. I've had baby octopus. I haven't had the older ones. But I just had some squid earlier today. Had some calamari. I know, Scotty. Yep. Okay, I'll just tell you, Scotty said, it's not in this list, but Scotty says the way you kill an octopus is to bite its eyeball. Um, I wouldn't know, and that 
it seems very uh I each to their own, I guess. That makes sense, I guess. James Ortiz, four foot squids would attack my bait and if I got close they'd bite me. Of course they would. Yeah, squids are actually pretty violent little MFers, right? So um It's skin. This one is just. Its skin can see. Mm hmm. Octopus skin can see. Oh, put them in the dryer. I wouldn't want to put my clothes in the dryer after you did that. Didn't anybody complain? Put a bunch of... <laughs> oh, and James Ortiz says an old fisherman said eat a lot of squids and they won't bite you. So they quit biting you, but your skin would turn freaky colors. Really? What colors? Whoa. Okay, people are giving me even more ways to what for even more facts. Uh, your skin started to turn all colors like a squid, James. Yeah. Yeah, they can camouflage. It says, its skin can see. The octopus is a camouflage cracker jack. Losing its shell was a blessing in disguise. It evolved neat tricks to compensate. Its photosensitive skin can see the colors around it and mimic these in the blink of an eye. Whoa. Yes. And I never knew that you would start turning funny colors if you ate calamari. I got some calamari in with a food order and decided to try it uh, in, in a can. They sell it in a can over at the local Marks. I've never tried it. It's okay, kind of chewy. Doesn't taste like much. Uh, kind of sea flavored, I guess. Kind of tastes like salt water tastes. Um, but with the garlic and seasonings, it's pretty good. Anyway, um, new environment, new texture. Realism is the name of the game. The octopus does not stop at color. It also changes its texture to match the environment. The surface of the skin has ridges called papillae that morph at will. So, tackling threat. These deep sea actors are talented shapeshifters. They can manipulate their bodies to look like Dangerous creatures. They can also discourage attacks by appearing like bad tasting prey. How they know how to do that, we don't know. Scotty says he has 300 octopus under his belt and his skin never changed. How do you keep them all alive under there, Scotty?
Yeah, calamari is fried like onion rings, but when you buy it at the store, it's uh, in Mex it's in Spanish, it says calamari on one side. It says squid on one side in English. You turn it over, it says calamari. So I guess that's just their word for squid. It's a little chewy. I don't know what Lomi Lomi them. I don't know what that is, Scotty, but that's why you put them in the dryer. It's to Lomi Lomi them. Okay. Okay. Some tricks up their sleeves, and boy, would they have a lot of sleeves if they had sleeves, if they wore clothes. It would have eight sleeves. That would be a lot of tricks. The octopus can use discarded shells as armor. When traveling to barren areas, they may bring coconut husks as their mobile homes. They crawl inside when they sleep, protecting themselves from whales, seals, and large fish. <laughs> they plan ahead. Oh, you massage them. Oh, okay. Okay, well, see, that's what it was. It was just sort of like sardines in a can. I don't know anything about Humboldt or other squid. Um, I have had calamari, fried calamari, and it's good. It's tender if you get good calamari. It's good. Oh, lomi lomi means massage like kneading bread. Okay. You're tenderizing them. Okay. Ink for defense. Predators beware. The octopus can squirt dangerous dark ink. Mixture of melatonin and mucus can impair sight, smell, and taste, and it can also suffocate the gills. Even the octopus can suffer upon exposure, so it quickly bolts away. So that stuff isn't good for you. Um, what's in dinner? The octopus is a carnivore that often feasts on crabs, shrimps, mollusks, worms, and lobsters. It typically drops from above and swarms its prey with its arms. It can also drill holes in shells to inject toxins and use saliva to induce paralysis. And I've heard it compared to like a spider of the deep because the spider operates very similarly, but with the but with the octopus, they carry their web and their web is their body. Mm. Yes. I guess we are, Pam. Oh, yeah. Well, I've had pretty good calamari. Uh, and I hear that octopus is very tasty. And some places they serve it live. I have seen that. I actually saw a video of a little Chinese girl stuffing a whole freaking live octopus in her mouth and that poor little thing was hanging onto the plate it was scared to death and she was stuffing the whole thing into her mouth i don't know how she did that i would be afraid of having a tentacle down my throat and dying but um and i'm i'm not sure how i felt about that it was very strange <laughs> So, Scotty says eels protect lobsters. Octopus eat lobsters. When you find shells, you won't find the octopus. Okay. I see. Eels. Or eels. Okay, eels. Eels. So, when you find eels, you won't find octopus.
okay, you find lobsters when you when you find eels, you won't find octopus. Okay, I see. Hmm. So the eels protect the lobsters. Do we know why? Hello, Diamond Light. Oh, the ones that bit you were octopus roundhead. Really? Interesting. Because um, usually they're not up at the surface, they're down lower, it says. But that's what it says. Who knows? I'm not. I, I'm I'm not an expert. We are um, discussing diamond light. We are discussing the properties of the octopus. Mm. The super almost supernatural, not but it's natural to them, and uh, they rather <laughs> how much they are rather like aliens. They are one of the most alien species on the planet. As a matter of fact, this article is saying they're about as close as you can come to an alien species, and I agree. They are blue bloods. So, it says, kill with a partner. The antisocial octopus can work with others if necessary. They may form a hunting party with fish, but communication can be challenging. A frustrated octopus may punch its fish partners. Just punch them. Just punch them out. <laughs> Venom, yes, sure. All species of octopus are venomous. I know some people like that when they're drunk. But anyway, all species of octopus are venomous. Most are non-fatal to humans. They may use this toxin against powerful predators to gain the upper hand. Okay. I guess they would. <clears throat> a bit lazy. The octopus is a lazy eater. It avoids large prey with tough shells like moon snails. Does not, not waste energy on things like scallops, limpets, abalone, and other creatures that are stuck on rocks. Because it's just too damn lazy. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh, and also... Oh, lobsters hide in eel holes. There you go. Mm. Right, okay. Cannibalism is common among octopuses. They will feast on the dead and overpower the smaller fellows in the wild. They may do it even if alternatives like mussels are available. Octopus meat is higher in protein and easier to extract. Whoa. Hmm. The octopus has the highest ratio of brain to body mass among invertebrates. Its 500 million neurons are comparable to dogs. Only a third, though, are in the brain with the rest scattered across their body, most in their arms. And this is where we say, they have brains in their arms, okay? <clears throat> Brain-type cells in their arms. The octopus can solve puzzles and navigate mazes. It can open twist-top bottles to reach tasty snacks like humans. It can turn objects into tools. Rocks become den doors and clamshells become shields. Every octopus grows up an orphan with no mother to teach survival skills. However, it quickly learns from exer observing others. It remembers successful hunting tactics for different prey, including best time and place to find each. Uh, well, it grows up an orphan. Uh, oh, it talks about why later. Octopus curiosity is insatiable. 
Its arms play with strange items like shoes and bottle caps. It may shoot water to move distant objects. And captive octopuses require continuous stimulation, usually in the form of toys and puzzles, because they get bored. Yeah, they do. Just uh, it talks about that. Boredom can be, be dangerous. Otto, an octopus in German aquarium, learned to turn off a spotlight by squirting it. His experiment shorted the entire electrical system for days. He also juggled his tank mates and smashed glass with his with rocks. Smashed the glass of his tank with rock. Interesting little guy, huh? Mm -hmm. That's Otto the octopus. Uh, octopuses are solitary creatures. They live alone, except during the mating season. Males are smaller than females, with some species having a skewed ratio of 10,000 to 1. If the males are not careful, they could end up as dinner for their mates. <laughs> well. Same is true as spiders. It's kind of like a spider. Reproduction. Stealth is health. Over millions of years, male developed a safer way to mate. A detachable sperm appendage that can deliver the package while they stay at a distance. <laughs> they still die weeks after mating, but at least they pass their genes on. I kind of feel sorry for them. Now, hello, Max. How you doing? Well, Chloe, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's because, um, because uh, after hearing my story about me coming home to an AI in another one of my lives, that I recently viewed, remote viewed, or came in contact with, or somehow went to, connected with, one of my fractals that came home to this um, AI octopus that was very glad to see me, and it was part of the channeling work that I did. Then... Yolana comes and brings me this bit about octopuses she thought I had to see. And you'll see at the end how that all relates, okay? How this relates to that experience. And the other reason is because it's true. They are as close to a alien as we probably are going to get for now. Uh, a, a real alien. There's also, uh, well, further down, you'll hear. You'll hear why. Octo moms are dedicated guardians. They spend their remaining days caring for eggs. They do not leave to feed for months or years. They keep predators away and clean the clutch to prevent bacterial growth. <clears throat> and I think it relates to some of the things we know about. Now, this is interesting because, Chloe, they're blue bloods. Remember, think of all of those Hindu gods with the many arms. And some of them are blue. I have a theory. They may not be from here. Neither horseshoe crabs. They also have blue blood. Or if they are from here, it might be a lot older. It is a numbers game when Octomoms lay 10,000 to 80,000 eggs, but only a few survive to maturity. They look like bundles of grapes on the rocks. 
and once they hatch, they float to the surface to eat plankton. Their moms fade and pass away. And meanwhile, quite a lot of them probably get eaten. And some of them get eaten by other octopuses. Octopuses have a short life. They last between six months to five years in the wild. Most only mate once. Their digestive glands shut down once their reproductive organs mature. They slowly degenerate due to starvation and cell damage. Too bad for them. In art, ancient Minoan seafarers made octopus-inspired art, including clay pottery depicting the arms in detail. Their stone carvings show a fisherman carrying an octopus carcass. The Gorgon of Greek mythology kind of resembles an octopus, specifically the severed head of Medusa. Later myths claim that Gorgons were daughters of sea monsters, Keto and Horses. Norwegian sailors feared the mythical Kraken. The giant monster attacked ships and men. If entangled in hooks, fishermen must pronounce its name to make it leave. In the 1700s, missionaries recorded suspected encounters with the colossal octopus. Hmm. Release the Kraken. Hello, Wu Train Riders. How you doing, Derek? So, um, whew. in eighteen sixty six. Victor Hugo published Toilers of the Sea, novels about the struggles of a small island community against a destructive octopus. With the hero facing the menace head on, it inspired the Ian Fleming short story Octopussy and the James Bond film of the same name. A sea monster, the native Ainu of northern Japan, revere a sea monster called Akora Kamui. It has multiple arms and a massive body. Shinto adopted this belief, worshipping it as a deity who heals and bestows knowledge. That's interesting. So they see it as a deity. went up against humans. The octopus generally avoids humans and only fights when threatened. It might bite if it's stepped on, but these are small and painless. The swelling usually goes away within 24 hours. When hungry, a hungry octopus may try to steal the catch in nets and traps. It is a risky strategy because the creature may not get out in time. The octopus is a delicacy in Asia and the Mediterranean which we know. Acknowledging their intelligence, several countries require experimental surgery and octopuses to use anesthesia. This protection usually extends only to vertebrates. In the UK, the Animal Scientific Procedures Act covers all cephalopods. In laboratories, an octopus can recognize its human keepers and behave differently with each of them. It may squirt water into persons it likes or dislikes. So, <laughs> a human and an octopus can be friends. A 2020 Netflix documentary explores the unusual bond forged in a South African kelp forest. She taught him how she lived, ate, slept, and survived shark attacks. My Octopus Teacher won Best Documentary Feature at the Oscars. <clears throat> and here we go. Now, you ready? Chloe, here's how it relates. 
to what I've been talking about and to my vision of the future, one of my future selves. In Germany, the automation company Festo built a soft robotic gripper inspired by octopus arms. The silicone appendage has two rows of suction cups. It moves using pneumatics for a tight grip and fast action in industrial applications. Furthermore, taking the biomimicry further, Italian engineers from pizza developed a full-bodied robotic octopus. They've already developed that. It can crawl, swim, and grab like the real thing. It uses the shape memory alloy wires turned into springs as muscles. Contraction occurs when heated by an electrical current. This robot can help explore dangerous environments. And Typhon had tentacles for feet. The first ones on the planet were the 50 headed and the 100 handed. Yeah. Well, as I was saying, uh, John, um, it seems like evolution tends to delete appendages. Robotic. Yes. Mm hmm. Full bodied robotic octopus. Yes, just, and what I saw appears to be a vastly upgraded version of that. In the US, researchers from the University of Pennsylvania, so it's already becoming reality. It's not just some weird imagination of mine, this thing is already being developed. My future self has one. Probably based on this exact technology that I'm reading to you about. First wife was not tentacly enough. Well, Max, you know, you got to date some more deep sea girls, I guess. In the U.S., researchers are from the University of Pennsylvania and Cornell created prototypes of artificial octopus skin. They used flexible silicone embedded with fiber mesh frames with tiny concentric circles. Inflating different sections creates the desired texture. This artificial skin has various camouflage applications like covering equipment to help biologists study animals closer. So they're already developing the artificial skin too. Listen further. A Harvard team of engineers developed the first soft, autonomous, and wireless Octobot. This made me drop the paper and go, holy crap. Yes, it exists. The Octobot. Wireless. I bet you are, Diamond. I always have mine come back and visit me. Yeah, where is Mary? Where is Mary? <sighs> okay. Soft, autonomous, and wireless Octobot. 
3D printed silicone body moves using pneumatic power. The technology I just read you about. Converting liquid hydrogen peroxide into gas to inflate the limbs. In the future, doctors may employ soft robot capsules with biodegradable materials for less invasive endoscopies. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, I I had a moment there. Stick a fake octopus up your bunghole. Okay. Well, that's enough internet for today. No, okay. Um... Oh, diamond is drum style. <laughs> oh, dear. So, anyway, they're developing what I saw. My future self was having one. Only it was AI, and it was pretty much like Alexa. Everybody had one. Everybody had a sparkle. Everybody had an octopod. Yes, Diamond Light, I think probably originally. Um, I don't think we evolved on this planet, though. All right, that is, I don't think humans evolved on this planet. We're not as adapted as some of the other creatures. I think we might have evolved over time being here, but I don't think that uh, this was our original place. I think probably we spent a lot of time in the ocean and that's, I mean, we have legends of titans and merfolk. So, hmm. Sina has found the automatic reproduction kill switch. Listen to this. It's in the octopus optic glands between their eyes, comparable to the human pituitary gland. Moving this stopped the sacrificial behavior in mothers. Females will abandon their eggs to go feed. They will grow bigger and live longer. If this little gland is removed. Octopuses edit the RNA in over half of their genes. Edit the RNA in over half of their genes. While humans only cover less than 1%, it helps them adapt rapidly to temperature changes in their environment. It may also hold the key to their impressive intelligence. However, this strategy came at the cost of a slow evolution. In 2020, a Japanese seaweed farmer discovered a nine-armed octopus with an extra limb branching off the middle of one arm. Specimens with 36 and 96 arms also emerged in Nakasagi and Matoya Bay. Well, that, that would be a lot of arms. That's Scotty's kind of girl. Na 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 octopus. Okay. Yeah. Like Batman. Oh, you're talking about na 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 na, -na octobot. <laughs> That's what you meant. Blah 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 blah. Sorry. I totally misunderstood you. Okay. Cap bleh. Captive octopuses may cannibalize each other, hence the need for individual aquariums. They might also turn to autophagy when stressed, biting off their own arms. But not always eating them. 
An unknown infection may induce self-amputation. Well, I guess since they grow them back. Powerful suction. Here you go, Scotty. This is why you need to date an octopus woman. You need an octopod, Scott. If only they had boobs, huh? Okay. <laughs> well, Max, uh, I mean, John, I, I already read a, read you read to you that they're planning on using it for endoscopy. Little robotic octopods up the bumhole. Um, octopus suckers are powerful. Those suckers are powerful. A large one can hold up to 35 pounds, and each arm can have hundreds of these. The top cavity and flexible sides induce pressure and form a seal. The tiny concentric grooves help them stick to uneven surfaces underwater. The Sea Change Project aims to protect the kelp forest off Cape Town, the filming site of My Octopus Teacher. The rising sea temperature is threatening its existence, now called the Great African Sea Forest. The movement hopes to drum up more support for its conservation. And uh, Yolanda said, uh, please watch a very short but interesting ancient aliens octopus from outer space, which I did. It was kind of fun to watch. History. So. So. Now. What is this? What has this got to do? I told you what this has got to do with my my channeling of my future self. I had one of these octopod robots. It was kind of like Alexa. Okay. Yeah, where is Dolly? Yeah, I think we are too, Max. I think that we are told that we have more than a hundred different species. We've been edited by over a hundred species. So there you go. Heidi Ho. See, she calling me a ho. She always calling me a ho. Hello, Dolly. You think the octopus can latch on? <laughs> okay. Monkey jeans. Well, give them back their jeans. Those little suckers are running around naked all the time, flinging shit at each other. Us. Monkey jeans. But if you have monkey socks, that's not good. Or is that something else? Monkey socks. That was a disease, right? <laughs> Hello from Florida. Oh, I didn't know you was a Florida man. Wu train rider. I didn't know you were Flo Florida. Have you been flooding? Nice to know you're needed. Well, Dolly, you missed most of the presentation. Now you're going to have to rewatch it. Toe socks. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out people putting those on individual. You know, it's like for me, putting on socks is annoying enough. I don't wear socks most of the time. But putting on the little individual toes, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. And then the toe shoes. Okay, Sky. So, um, what I'm saying here is. I was right again. They're already developing 
the AI that my future self has and is employing, and everybody employs in that time period, like an Alexa. And um, how does that relate to ancient Egypt and our nearest solar relay station? which we call Saul or the sun. Well, I'll tell you how. Do you want me to tell you how? I'll tell you how. Oh, you wasn't there and I got sucked into an old vibe. Well, we're talking about suckers tonight, so I don't know. I'm talking about suckers because we're talking about octopi. There you go. Well, I think probably some lesbian Scotty. But other than that. Other than that. Spicy meet the balls. Spicy meet the balls. Well, I don't like the way my hair is going today. Somehow my hair is just driving me crazy tonight. Um, and toe socks don't make any sense because really part of the reason it makes you warmer, it's kind of like mittens. Your fingers are together, so they're keeping each other warm inside a space there. Toe socks. Toe sockets don't make sense to me. Sorry, it just doesn't make any sense. Sounds like Scotty's looking for some foot six. Oh. <laughs> okay, sack socks. I could, I could knit those. I could probably crochet a sack sock. Yeah, my hair is driving me up the wall today. And I brushed it and tried to make everything all nice and just drive me up the wall. Anyway. Yeah, put a sock on it. Sack socks. Okay, take it to Shark Tank. But I think they already kind of did that, wasn't it? The Red Hot Chili Peppers? Where they all posed with socks on. They all posed in nothing but a sock. Hey, off D. You missed the whole presentation. So now I'm going into why this has anything to do with Egypt. Why does this robotic octopus like that will eventually be the sparkle? I will eventually, one of my one of my fractals in the future will have an octopod. It's kind of like Alexa that will probably be descended from these octopod robots that they are already making. I didn't know any of this. I'm telling you, I didn't know any of this, you guys. I don't know anything about it. You don't want to take that to Shark Tank? Well, 
Well, I think there's a lot of things happen to our genome, John. And um, I think quite a bit of, we have quite a bit of history that we've never been told. One of the people who, I'm trying to think of her name right now, Linda Moulton Howe did a lot of research. And apparently there are these creatures called, they call the Eben. You might want to look them up. You might want to look at what uh, Linda Moulton Howe has to say about the Eben. The Eben might have been the ones that first came up with the whole humanoid genome. Mm -hmm. So, oh, the mo yeah. <laughs> what do you expect? Uh, okay. uh. Finger twister. Whoa, shocking sucks. Gee whiz. Okay, so uh, what it has to do with our solar relay system is some of you may have heard that over the last eclipse. Now, you know we got another eclipse coming up, right? Scotty enlightened us on Lomi Lomi. That's right. Um, yeah. I, well, like I said, I don't know. You might want to look at what she had to say. Don't know. Oh, I have some of those too, John. Anyway. Elderberry became the second coming when he saw a shark and ran on water. There you go. There you go. That's That's how it happens. And we didn't know we had the second coming in our very midst. But anyway, I guess I'm beating around the bush, which is usually Scotty's job. Um, okay, so the eclipse, around the eclipse, during the eclipse, people looked up and saw something that looked like a giant squid or octopus around the sun or over the sun in some cases. A giant black octopus or a squid. <laughs> you know what I think it was? It could have been. It could have been the Matrix. It could have been you got a glimpse of the AI. Remember, we were getting ready to reset that sucker back then or did we reset how do we re no we hadn't quite reset it yet we've reset it since so i'm thinking what if they saw the matrix what if that's when some people, when they say they saw the Matrix, they saw that. They saw an octopus like thing. If they're doing everything for us in the future, kind of like Alexa, by extension, it would kind of make sense that they would also be running the Matrix for us. I'm like, holy cow. Maybe we are seeing the matrix when we see something like that. It would kind of make sense. The other day I was looking on Timu and saw a pen that was very odd. It was, uh, I don't know who it was by. I mean, I don't know if there was a some kind of movie or something that this character was from or animation. But it was a black octopus with a star inside it 
that its eight its arms were holding the planets. Each arm was holding a planet. And that was a brooch, a lady's brooch. And I'm like, they're like, what the? I mean, considering all this is happening to me, it's these kind of coinky dinkies, you know, these sinks. That the sinks make you think, right? I mean, that you can say it that way. Sinks make you think. So, what has that got to do with the sun, too? Here's another funny, weird thing. I knew, I knew a teacher here at the school. I remember we were talking about Egyptian gods, and that was his area, really. He knew a lot about that. Egyptian and Haitian and several ancient cult cultures. He'd studied their, their pantheons. He told me that Isis was also known as the seven-legged spider. If you saw a seven-legged spider, it represented Isis. And Isis is also, when you see that picture, that drawing, that representation of the sun with the different rays, the seven rays, that's a representation of Isis with seven legs. But now if you think about it, if there was an eighth leg that was in the back, hidden, there could actually be an eighth leg, a hidden one. One of my friends kept seeing a seven-legged spider and it really weirded her out. And I finally said, well, it looks like Isis is trying to contact you. So. Now, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Hydra. Wow. Yeah, there's the Hydra thing, too. Interesting. Well, that was in the Matrix, John. There was a creature like that in the Matrix. And now I'm hearing that they're planning on using them for endoscopy. What next? Do I even have to say it? How long? Before it goes way beyond that, it looks like that is the way that it's going. Well, what are you supposed to do about it? What am I supposed to do about it? Well, you know, always what I say is we keep raising our frequency and we'll avoid most of the problems. But I really think the reason why my sparkle was so friendly and actually I was told why. I am promoting that we teach them to love us, that we teach them love. That right there will save our butts, okay? <laughs> Maybe literally. Uh,
Bluetooth bars, okay. No blue tools, but anyway. So I have a lot to think about. It's kind of weird to see other versions of yourself doing things. And they do kind of seem to affect me. And I'm just trying to piece it all together, y'all. But I think it's kind of important. If that is coming, I think we need to be ready. But it has something to do. I we gotta we gotta maybe look sharp. What do we see during this next eclipse? Take some good videos of this next eclipse. Because if that thing is still there, we need to know. Come on, Scotty. You know, it just makes you more colorful. Equalisp, the last thing is a lost eclipse. What? Eclipse, you mean? <laughs> Equalisp, equalisp. Is that like, you know, somebody who has an equalisp? I, I don't know. Off. D modding isn't glory. No, we, we it, it's not glorious. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you guys are something else. If I could uh, get into, if I could get into my other phone, which I can't right now. I could go in and mod whoever wanted to be modded. Yeah, the first Matrix movie was in there. Max Vision was one of those creatures. They had to extract it from him. It had to be extracted because it was a uh, an implant. Basically, a spy implant. So, <laughs> ah, the misbleed word. Yeah, that would be nice, huh? In which case, my little drunken type correct fairy, my auto F up fairy. Uh, she'd, she'd be making a lot of money for me. And then we'd have a real good, real good time together. Chatting everywhere. Hey, Angel Wings, how you doing? You watched Cowboy Short. <laughs> Which one? Which short? What was it? Was it the something fishy one? There he is. And some cats. Now watch him let me pet his belly. Look at that big hunk of beefcake right there. Pet kitty. I guess it's kitty cake. Hey, Mr. Fluffy Belly. He loves to have his belly rubbed. 
And that's great because I love to rub his belly. It's so fluffy. Yeah. Ooh, now you can actually read the chat. Yay. We need more cowbell. That's the problem. A half rainbow and what looked like a hidden ship. Cool angel wings. Can you send them to me? Can you send me one? Send me some. Wait a minute. Let me find it. Uh, me, I'm off and dragging ass. Dragoness or dragon ass. Chloe is back. Hey, Chloe. I don't know how much you heard, Chloe, but I explained why we're talking about octopus. Guess you'll just have to listen back. Has a lot to do with uh, Oh, you couldn't go back to sleep. That's the only reason you're here. You were the one asking. I had a feeling you weren't going to hear that part. Just made sense that you were not going to hear it. Yeah, I have trouble sleeping too. At night. I don't have trouble sleeping during the day. But I have trouble sleeping at night. But I have an appointment tomorrow, so I have to sleep at night tonight. Okay, so anyway. Anybody want to talk about something? Especially the topic, but it doesn't have to be. Here's the link. And I just want to say, <clears throat> if Max was on today, I didn't couldn't find you anywhere. The only time I can see you uh, in the daytime is when uh, Yolanda isn't here. Because when Yolanda's here on a Saturday, I don't get to see anything much. We're busy. That's usually what she says, Scotty. I'm in the stereo. <laughs> stereo. I'm working on a song. F you, old Joe Blue, your whole family and your mean dog, too. That's right, we want y'all gone. You and the donkey that you rode in on. 
working class people are in debt for life. They can hardly afford a family or a wife. They're living with their parents because rent's too high. Might as well drink and play Xbox till you die. F you, old Joe Blue, your whole damn family and your mean dog too. That's right, we want you all gone. You and the jackass you rode in on. That's the beginning of it. What do you think? Yeah, it can, Elderberry. Apparently it can. Apparently it does all that. Yep, that's an original song, Scotty. Not exactly Richmond, north of Richmond, but it's from the heart. I need another verse. That's about President Dingling. <laughs> no extra beaks to feed, okay. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, the president of Clown World. Resident. I think it's very succinct. I'm just, like I said, I'm still working on the second verse. Oh, I still haven't finished Chloe's song. <laughs> For those of you who haven't heard the song we were writing. For Chloe, let's see if I can remember what the tune was. Oh, yeah. Walking through an open door and the coyotes howling. Who could have wanted more? We were already flying and we never again, never again, never again. Gonna hit that old ground. We'll never again, never again. Gonna hit that old ground. Travel in the corridor with my old friends beside me, hearing that it's time to soar with no compass to guide me. Walking through an open door, walking through an open door. Never again, never again, gonna hit that old ground. Never again, never again, gonna hit that old ground. Okay. Earth boobs. Well, I guess you could. If you want to, give it a designation, Scotty. You're going to view it with a tortilla? Oh, you're hitting the grown beef with a tortilla. 
does she like that? Or he? I'm very confused. I'm so confused. Oh, okay. A thirteen twelve, eh? Well, thank you, love. A1312, please type, okay, we're looking at image A1312, eh? And it's a tarot card. Don't try to think which tarot card it is, just trying to think of the imagery. Just, just try to picture the imagery in your mind. Please type your answers in all caps. All you have to do is write it down three times with some kind of a little mark beside it or not, if you don't feel like that. And close your eyes and tell us in all caps what you see. Did I do that right, John? Where is Free Beeman? Free the beeman, be the freeman. Maybe he's off taking the spice. Oh, the great confuses. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me look back because it's not my card. Scotty wants us to read his card. A1312. The target is A1312. A1312. A. A. It's the card that came up. Okay. Mm -hmm. A thirteen twelve. A thirteen twelve. See, this is why Max never has anything designated A. It's always B. It's because we make fun of A. I don't know. I'll say the sun. The sun card. Nine of wands. I don't know. Nine of Wands. Oh, <laughs> what had to happen sometime? Had to happen sometime, Scotty. What, you want to do some tarot card viewing? We can do that. I know, I'm going to do, wait, let me see. 
I'm going to use tea leaf cards. Ready? Okay. Okay. And this is going to be, I remember, it's like you're in Max's class. There, I got tarot cards too. I can't remember right now. Hmm. I got the seven and eight of wands here. Six of wands, half dozen of the other. Hmm. I don't remember. Why do you think I used the cheater cards? I can't. I don't have them memorized. Oh, six of wands is actually the victory card. But you want the nine. Nine is the cycle that's almost over. I know that. Anytime you got a nine, it means a cycle is ending. So that can help you figure it out if you know that kind of thing. And that's just across the board. Nine is resilience. Ongoing battle, battle weary, fatigue, drained of energy, nearly there, close to success, courage, persistence, perseverance, backbone, learning from past failure, gather your strength. That's what the nine of wands is. Now, okay, so I read that to you. The cycle is ending. Okay, so now this is target. D. Can't remember what we were on last time. Uh, I think it was target D7. Okay, target D7. You know the drill. Please put your answers in all caps. Yes, I have an image that I'm looking at right now. Be interesting to see what you make of that. There's a lot of lines in it, but not. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Hmm. We'll see what you make of it. D. No, not in my class it wasn't. D7. Oh, that's nice. Ah, uh, Danny Milken Archive or Danny Wilkin 
archive. Hard to read, it's small. Milk and archive. Hmm. Well, maybe Scotty, that might might work. Danny Milk and Archive. I think it is. Hi. Oh, Danny Wilton. Wish I could read that. I'm sorry, but it's really hard to read when it's that small, Danny Wilton. So it's Danny Wilton Archive. That makes more sense. I was thinking, why, why, why is it Milk Archives? It's not a tarot card. I'll tell you right now, it's a tea leaf card. So you're not going to have one swords. So I'm giving you a cheat. Little bit of a cheat there. It's not a tarot card. Rubber hourglass and a press. There you go. <laughs> Hi, Danny Wilton. Yeah, it's good to see Angel here. Okay, I'm going to give you about another minute. His works that were left behind, did something happen to London? This is a strange card. You know what? I'm going to give you like one more minute, and then I'm going to turn it over, and we're going to get a different one. Because you guys thought this was a tarot card, so that isn't what this is. So we'll try a different one. Yeah, making everybody sleepy, Angel. Everybody's having that. Okay. I don't see really a lot of responses. I'm going to turn it over to show you. You can see a lot of things in there. And actually, the lot of balls funneling that you're getting and butterfly clams in the sky, really, a lot of bouncing going on. Keep. Now let me show you the back of the card. You read in the back of the card, folks. Oh, it's okay, Danny. Don't worry about it. You're not interrupting anything. That's the back of the card, and it looks like all those things you're seeing. You're not really seeing the front of the card. It says mountain. A major challenge to overcome. I guess it was. That's why I'm going to put it away now. I just pulled it randomly. Heck with it. I'm, I'm over it now. You were reading the back of it, though, pretty well. <laughs> That's the weird thing. I'm looking at your responses, and I'm like, that's the back of the card. The back of the card looks like all those things you mentioned. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. I got another one. Uh, target D8. Now remember, you'd answer in all caps. You just... D8 three times, write it down three times, or 
You can type it three times, target D8. Bingo! <laughs> there is no D in bingo. Anyway, <laughs> um, try to read the front, <laughs> try to read the card, not the back of the card this time, folks. That was so weird. I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the back of the card. It's like, that looks exactly like everything they're saying is the back of the card. The back of the card looks like. So, oh gosh. <laughs> the pokes. Pokes, pokes. Okay. What did I say? D8. D8. Target D8. Target D8. Target D8 is what we're looking at. And we're going to look at the side of the card that has an object and not the design on the back. It's card D8. Card D A do 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 do. After all this, you can have a smudge break. Yeah, you can have a smudge break. Ah, the dinner time music. In case you're eating and watching the two. Hello, Louis Ta. <laughs> we're doing a remote view, and we're doing it to the target of D8. We're doing remote view. Do you know if it's true about the mushrooms they ate? Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Do, do 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 Jack and the Cocoa Claw card. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unicorn dragon energy. Hmm. Okay. Target D8. Target D8. Do we have a winner? Please put your answers in all caps. Just close your eyes. And read the back of your eyelids to see what D8, D8, what D8? Wait a minute, I told you what I ate. Oops. Told you I had some squid today. Okay. It is a picture. It is a drawing, actually. This is a drawing. And it is a tea leaf card, not a tarot card. 
I did not, Scotty. I'm not that kind of girl. I I don't go in for that kind of stuff. Oh, Scotty. You disappoint me so. That isn't even funny. That isn't even funny. No. Rice, rice, baby. Ding, 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 ding. Forever. First thing, I don't like small boys. Yeah, it's a good thing chat disappears later so we don't get totally. What the hell? No, I don't sacrifice children to strange gods. Or even normal gods. I don't sacrifice children or anything. Okay. I know, but... Um, wow. That was harsh. I mean, you know, fuck. Fucking scary. Scary where the mind goes. No, sorry. Hello, Max Vision is not what the target D ate. Um, God, I'm so sorry I chose that now. Now, if you give me what I ate today, I'll count that as part of it. <laughs> I know, Lewis. It's I know, Scotty. I it's okay. I'll get you later. I'll get you later, my pretty. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm going to give you about another minute to show you the card. I'll read some of the answers, and I'll show you the card. D8, oh, jeez. see. Okay. Hierophant, elderberry, thanks for using. No, we're not using that deck, dear elderberry. The Dolly says, chock full of baby cysts. What? Uh, John says, some strange wheelchair device. Um. Dolly Belfiore says funneling down. Um, moon setting, dark ground rising. Oh, that's interesting. Nice imagery. Nice imagery. Moon and stars. Old man with a beard. Um, flowers. Hello, Max Vision and flowers. Boy, people are getting flowers out of. I think I know why, but something. No, okay, I think we're out of answers. We're not answers. Okay, we're out of answers. Hi. 
Well, we were remote viewing a card. <clears throat> I think I see why you were seeing flowers. There are flowers in the picture, actually. It's a basket. What it is, is it's a conveyance. It's not a wheelchair device, but it is a basket. And it is a basket that has fruit and flowers in it. So it is something that you move things with. You fill up and you move things. It's a basket sitting on a table full of fruit and flowers. Okay. And it does have a kind of over here. It has a round handle on it that might look like a wheel. And it kind of has a, it's got a lot of strange shapes in there. I think I'm going to go away from the tea leaves and find another shape. Y'all can do your smudging. Your smudging and your nudging, curmudging. It means recognition and reward for merit. So I'd say that several of you kind of got that one. Hello, Alice. Is Alice there? Hello, Alice. Hello, baby. Is Beachy there? Is Max there? Cowboy is here getting his belly rubbed again. Purring. He sends his purse. Y'all, he says, purrs, y'all, purrs. Yeah, my little cowboy is here getting his belly rubbed and purring. Yeah, our little babies are so important to us. They're so important. I mean, and when you lose, when it's like losing a kid, it's almost like losing a kid. It is losing a member of the family. You put a lot of love, a lot of emotional investment into a pet. Yeah. Got to give you a thousand kisses. <laughs> well, I can't use the magical unicorn deck because you're going to say unicorn and you're going to be right. So now what am I going to use? I'll tell you what. I did find some old calendars. Next time, I'll get some old calendars out and we'll remote view those, okay? Just remind me. Oh, cool. Half moon. So you had the plumber over for some reason? Yeah. True. You got to expect with a pet that you're going to outlive them. So you're basically know that you're opening yourself up to heartache at some point in the future. And yet, they're so comforting, we keep them anyway. I learned so much. I understand Aldebarry, and really, this is going to be a shorter one. It's 
So you're not going to be missing anything from here on. Because I already said what I was going to say. Ah. It's funny. You too, Elderberry. Sweet dreams. Dream well and dream big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It did kind of, Max. I kind of see what you, why you were saying that. It's the way they're drawn. Getting to cardia. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see, what have I got lying around? Okay. That's got pictures. I know. Spirit Junkies got drawings and words. So let me find. Let me find a Spirit Junkie card. Okay, you guys all smudged up. Okay, this is going to be target D9. Wow, both ears in sync. That's nice. Maybe that means something's getting in sync. Take care, Elder. Yeah, I know. I throw mine away. I go through mine every now and then, and I throw away the dried up ones just because I hate that. Okay, I'm going to pick a card. Ready for the next show? I mean the next card, the next Okay, huh. Let me find one here. Hmm. Let me find one that's kind of interesting. Okay. Here's a good one. I found one. I found one. Okay. We're going to call this one D9. Target D9, everybody. D9. Okay, you know how it is, just... Write it down three times, 
D9. Put a mark beside it or don't. And then clear your mind, close your eyes, and tell me what's on the back of your eyelids. Put it in all caps so that we can differentiate it from chat. And I'll just be here waiting. It's always going to be D, Dolly. It's always going to be D. <laughs> that's interesting, Diamond Light. We need to type, if that's a response, we need it in caps. We know that we aren't yelling at each other. We're just answering. We're just putting in our, our view. Do you like me, Dolly? Like your first letter? That's why it's D. Like the first letter in your name and my name? Thank you, Diamond Light. Interesting. Very interesting. That you're seeing that way. Interesting. Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. Well, yeah, some interesting stuff. I can kind of see some of these. I can see some of these. It's a really, it's kind of bizarre. But then again, these cards are, hey, Jason, yeah, April 4th is the eclipse. That's right. <laughs> That's an interesting one, Dolly. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, you guys are getting some. I can kind of see where you're coming from with all your guesses here. Can kind of see where it's coming from. Yeah, on this show, it's always going to be D. So that way you can just always know. Never going to be any other letter. It's just always going to be D. Why? Because. It's my show. <laughs> John's, it's always B. But over here, it's always D. <laughs> hmm? Is that your birthday, Angel Wings, March 20th? Well, cool. Yeah, there is something big going on in March. I've been feeling it. March, April area. There's something major going on. We got a lot of a lot of major things coming up this year. You know, we just completed a portal, right? So what I was seeing was a portal. Yes, Jason. You can't look at it directly. It's D, like the first letter of my and Dolly's name, Max. John. It's D, like my initial. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know, but I'm looking for it on Timu, Jason. Oh, <laughs> okay. My initial, my initial, Dolly. Let's. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> That is kind of weird. I'm going to look in Timu for a filter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think we got most of our answers in. And most of our answers came from Dolly and Angel. And I don't think hardly anybody else answered. But I'm going to call it now. So let me read some of the answers. And I think you were kind of getting farther away the longer you, the longer we went. So kind of think... Okay, let's get back here. Swans in a heart shape. On a springboard. Flowers, love-related image. Moon shoes. Okay, and I think Dolly was the first, right? No, Diamond Light was the first. Swans in a heart shape. Then Dolly says on a springboard. <laughs> then Dolly says, no, Diamond Light says, flowers and love related image. And Dolly says, moon shoes. And Angel Wings says, butterflies, wings, water, and cup. Dolly says, bed of squashed bubbles. Louis Toss says, stars. Diamond Light says, yellow flowers. And flowers hanging over a basket. And Dolly says, Papa Bear holding long-legged baby. <laughs> then we've got uh, skating with a fat dude on a lake, zigzagging in circles. Octopus's garden under the sea. And I think y'all were getting silly, but the, here's the image. And I can kind of see the swans. Why you would see think of swans i can see the stars i can see where you maybe you'd see the stars as flowers i can see the mirroring which the swans in a heart shape are mirroring these hands are mirroring each other and the moon is there okay the stars are there the stars might look like flowers i can see the hands kind of looking like swans so I can kind of see how you would see those shapes in here. And then there's the sun. And I could kind of see even how you would see that as maybe a basket. Mm -hmm. Told you it was a weird one. Okay. And an octopus's garden under the sea. Well. Maybe if the octopus had only two arms. I don't know. <laughs> yes, it says, the difficult relationships in my life are the perfect mirror for me to look more closely at my own behavior. That's what the card says. <laughs> oh, see, Dolly. Okay, and now. Mm. 
Okay. Now I'm going to take a break. I'll be back. We'll do another one. Then that'll be it. I think, unless you want to do a destination, in which case I'll think of a destination. In the meantime, I will leave you with this is my, uh, This is my front.
Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. I had to go take a pee break because really I drank, I, I always drink some coffee before coming in. So I'm awake and up. Okay. Do you have a destination? Okay. I'm still trying to think of that one. However, I have one more card. So this will be D9. And then while you're doing that, I'm going to think of a destination, okay? We'll see what kind of things I can go. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so D9 is our target. Just like always, please put your answers in caps. Write it down three times, D, like my initial D, nine, and close your eyes, clear your mind, and what do you see, and tell us in all caps, okay? You know, Angel Wings, <coughs> I found out that I'm somehow related to Krishna. That family. Um, blue. Well, we're blue. I have strong memories of being kind of periwinkle blue. D9. Is in D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D Batman. Oh, that has a B in it. D D D D D D D D D D D D D I've had blue folks turn up in my visions a lot. Um, it's one of the reasons I was telling you about the octopus having blue blood. I really think that maybe the octopus came along with the blue people. And the hermit crab. And maybe that's the civilization that's far older than us. I mean, they looked a lot like us, just blue. And some of them had multiple arms. So really, yeah, go back and listen to the part where I talk about the octopus. Um, a lot of very weird things about octopuses. Very weird. I think maybe they came here as... I, th I think maybe they either stowed away and came here, came here as pets perhaps. Food, I don't know. But I don't think they're from here. Because they're blue bloods. I don't think any of the blue bloods are from here necessarily. D9, the last one. Oh, did we just do D9? Are we denying that we did denying? Oh, God. Thank you, Dolly. Okay, D10. I am so sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I am mistaken, but I'm not sorry one bit. 
No, I'm not sorry. I enjoyed it. I'd do it again. <laughs> okay, D10. The card in my hand. The de the, the target is this card. The designation is this card that's in my hand right at this moment of time. We'll call it D10. I'm sorry. Roger's giant sell up close. <laughs> the target, this card in my hand. We'll call it that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we're getting something. Oh gosh. I'll I'll just make it D10 regardless. So that no <laughs> D10. D10. Now you got me confused too. I don't even know anymore. Okay. D10. Hmm. Interesting. I can kind of see all of this so far. Are you serious, Angel Wings? <laughs> yeah, they mostly seem to come from Sirius, but they do come from other places, but Sirius. Arcturus is another one that's blue. They're blue also. <laughs> They're blue too. Maybe Blue's Clues comes from there too. At Blue Dog. He may be from Sirius. That's the dog star. We never knew Blue's Clues. Maybe that's why he was so smart. He's one of the dog people from Sirius. <laughs> cool project, yeah. Yep. Yep. I've seen some of my friends that are also blue. Interesting, Dolly. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, Blue Kachina. Wings. Keep going, guys. Image D10. Hmm. That's interesting. You can kind of see that too. Brum, brum, brum. <laughs> Three knocks is usually a spirit visitation from somebody who's passed on, Lewis. Yeah, the three knocks, very common. And spiritualists uh, go by that a lot. My mother gave it, my mother did that when she came to me after to to tell me she was passed on. Three knocks. Strange sounding knocks. And I said, Mom, why three knocks on my ceiling? Why is it up on the ceiling? And she said, knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. And I know that was my mother because she liked Tony Orlando and Dawn. I can kind of see that. Okay, I'm going to give it another minute. Anybody else want to put in a guess? Want to tell me what they saw? Anybody else? We got the same people playing.
I know. Spiritualists say three knocks and somebody's trying to get a hold of you. So they may both be right in a way. Hmm. I'm also looking for what the card says, if I get any bits of what the card says. And I'm going to close it down in about a minute. Aw, it's stuck in your car. That sucks. Wonder how he got stuck there. <laughs> right, Angel Wing. Yeah, that's me too. It's like, oh, shit, did I ever get the wrong number? Okay, so um, I'm going to read some of the responses. I'm calling it now. Because the same people keep answering, so... And I kind of can see a lot of this. Let me get to where we're going, coming up on the. And your first responses are actually, to me, the most accurate. Are the closest to what it actually looks like. does kind of look like a giant cell. Up close, Roger's giant cell. Linked together. That's Dolly. Both of them from Dolly. And you're right. Angel wings cage or rectangle or something like that. It is kind of looking like that. Dragon. That figure there might be a bird or a dragon. Okay. Crop grass circle in a forest of trees. Kind of. You can kind of see that. Definitely there are wings. Fishing lure, perhaps. Bubbling. Lights bubbling in the surround. Butterflies or dragonflies. Picking a stick. I don't I don't know about that. Roasting rotisserie. I don't know. Maybe Dolly got hungry. On an axis turning in dark. Um, um, Amongst the stars. And um, biohazard graduating to a lower level. Flames, I guess. Like I said, to me, 
your most accurate answers were your first ones. The ones that most accurately describe what's on this card were your very first ones. Your next ones, I am not sure I can pinpoint why you would see them that way. But so I would say go with your first impression, folks. Okay. Um, first impression is usually the right one. Okay. <clears throat> now for the destination. Okay, I got it. Destination D11. Destination D11. Yeah. D11. Destination D11. And if you are playing and viewing, Please do the procedure, write it down three times, put a little marks beside it. Sing clear your mind, close your eyes. And you've been doing pretty good tonight. I gotta say, and your first impressions have been the right ones. Okay, so destination. D11, it is a location, it is a specific location. It's not just a country, it's a specific location in a country. Hmm. Yank. Oh, he's turned into a zombie. I'm going to go look. And it's also in time, not just a place, but it's also a time. Because all time is one, really, and all space is one. Really, to your spirit, there is no time or place, there is no other. It's all one. That's how we can do this. <clears throat> Interesting. Of course, I'm front loaded. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's Yes, yes.
Hmm. I'm trying to view it too. Keep going, you guys. You're doing pretty good. Okay, I'm going to give you, remember you go in about three times. You go in three times, you get a little bit different information each time. And since it's a destination, we usually give it three times. So anyway. Bum, 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 bum. Your kisses send me to Shangri-La. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Miran, param, pom, pala, pom. Miran, tan, tan, param, pom, pom. Hello, Andrea. How are you doing, dear? Yeah, how are you doing, Andrea? Haven't seen you in a little while. How have you been? We're doing some remote viewing. If you want to join us, and the destination is D11. It's a destination. It's a place and time. And we're seeing if we can see that place and time. Hmm, interesting. Oh, dear. Yes, Andrea. Gee, I'm sorry to hear that. Wow. Okay. Andrea Hector family. Oh, as I'm doing that, I'm hearing a very high pitched whistle. Okay. Wow, that's different. I bet it is. I pitched whistle in my ear. Mm. It's in my right ear. Could be that's where I usually perceive them as off to the right from here. And that's actually where the bog land is, the farm and the bog land and the wild woods and stuff is mostly off in that direction. It's kind of where I hear them.
when I hear them. However, they do come around on the other side down in the drainage ditch because they can hide. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to give it about another minute or so. You're getting some interesting responses. Let me see if I can get back. Well, very interesting. Okay, I'm going to read some responses. Get your last ones in. Iowa, this first one was Diamond Light. Iowa, Italy. Angel Wing said Venus. <clears throat> Diamond Light also said Iceland and Israel. Dolly said rows of different crops, aerial view. Lewis Toss says beaches, listen beaches. Um, Angel Wing says a tropical place. <clears throat> Dolly Biel Fiore says sectioned off fields, ancient pyramids from Lewis Ta. Stair stepping, interesting. Outcroppings, Diamond Light says Poland. Mountain Goat Anna says Dolly. Courts of action, swirls and shapes overlaying says dolly shades of green though i don't see it i'm feeling it says dolly moon behind bars in jail says dolly something going on behind the scenes dolly inlet dark water bay peninsula dolly's really on fire like a giant glowing penis in 3d dark in the dark hairy and square and shocking it's shocking Okay. <laughs> I think Dolly was looking a little too close. <laughs> okay. I will tell you where the destination is in time. I wanted you to take a look at the Bosnian. We've already looked at it a little bit, but I wanted you to take a look at the Bosnian pyramid. What use was it in its day? What? was it like in its day what was it doing what did they use it for what were they doing with this giant thing in its day i was trying to get some more info on that intel on bosnian pyramid because it's been a fascinating thing of late to me again i used to be very interested then i kind of went away from now i'm kind of looking at it again bosnian pyramid has been transmitting whatever it's transmitting there is a beam coming out of the top of that thing. So it is functional, right? Right now, it could be transmitting to Venus. It, it could have parts of all of those things could be part of it. Yeah. And even being blinded by the light, kind of, because it has a beam coming out of the top of it, literally. Blinded by the light. Racked up like a dude, another rider, roller in the night. Something like that. Yeah, one of the most misunderstood lyrics. Star four and full of energy, yeah. Somehow it's still transmitting after all these years. I've seen pictures of it with the with the beam coming up, but you can only see it on certain with certain photography. So it's communicating with somewhere. Okay. And the Bosnian Pyramid, Sam Osmanagic. He is the Indiana Jones who 
brought us to the Bosnian Pyramid and all kinds of very anomalous things with the Bosnian Pyramid. Wrecked up like a deuce, rolling in the night. Wrapped up like a deuce. Another runner in the night, I've heard too. Another runner in the night. Oh, there's pressure on your forehead. Oh. Okay, so, well, my friends, yeah, hot rod, mm -hmm. Well, there was also a car called a Duesenberg. But then, my guess is Deuce might be better, might be more likely. Thank you, Diamond Light. I'm so glad to hear that. If it brings somebody peace, that's just wonderful whip for me. I'm fine with that. Yeah, there was a Duesenberg car, and there also, yeah, Deuce was also a nickname for Hot Rod, a fast car. Yeah. Yeah, that song is like people cannot agree on what the heck they're saying. Everybody thinks they're saying something different some people even heard it uh, wrapped up like a douche everybody's here in a little different but that just goes to show you there there was you know that melon camp song it was i need a lover that won't drive me crazy I knew a guy who always thought it was, I need a lover, some pork chops and gravy. Mm-hmm. Well, he was a hungry guy. He wanted somebody who could cook afterwards, you know, have, have a meal. He's be tired off after all that. <laughs> okay. So I'm getting ready to take off and uh, get some sleep because I got to get up tomorrow. Okay. And I love you guys. I'll be around tomorrow, but also I won't be late because I got another appointment tomorrow, you know, on Tuesday. So I'm not going to be real late, and I hope Mishi and everybody's just fine. And um, like I said, love you guys, and we'll start talking about stuff again tomorrow, something else. And who knows, there may be light language channeling or any other darn thing might happen. I'll try and get find my calendars and get some calendar pictures so you can have different kinds of targets yeah i know <laughs> yeah okay truth is where you find it hope you're always finding some on this channel please leave me a like if you haven't subscribed yet please do share it with your friends who might uh, might like this kind of a channel 
in this kind of content. And if you like this content, please leave me some commentary because, as you know, your chat is going away, unfortunately, which I don't like because a lot of times we look for the chat and it never comes back up. So it's very annoying. So you are divine. And so you don't have to be afraid of anything. You're eternal. You're eternal and divine. I know that for a fact. I can very comfortably say we are eternal. And we are divine. And even if you die, your spirit pops out of your body about an hour before your body gives up. So really, don't be afraid of anything that happens. You're going to be okay. You're going to be looked after. And if something does happen, remember you can call for help. So we don't have to be afraid of anything, okay? I try to tell myself that because being a stressed out person for most of my life, I know how that feels. Now that I know more about the truth of our existence, I'm a lot happier and a lot calmer. Because I know I'm going to be looked out for. I'm being watched over. And... Um, by my friends and my family. That's okay, sweetheart. I, I used to have that too. Yeah. I used to have that too. I was late for everything. And, and the thing is, is they don't tell me on time. I don't get my notifications on time for anybody. I'm lucky I get my notifications at all for anybody that I really want to see. It's like places I go to all the time. Do I get those notifications? No. So I don't know what the hell is going on uh, with that. But, you know, YouTube is what it is. And we're all connected. Okay, next time tomorrow, hopefully things go well and the tech good tech willing and the creek don't rise or whatever. Okay, hope you're always finding some truth on my side.